This is Noam Chomsky speaking to you from my office at MIT and doing something I've never done before after having written 50 or I don't know how many books, namely talking about it. So I'm talking about the book which is entitled Hegemony or Survival. What I mean by that is pretty straightforward. Survival is a word we all understand. Uh, I'd like to know whether uh, there's going to be a world, a decent world, in which, say, my grandchildren can live. That's the question of survival. The survival of the human species is by no means an obvious thing. There are very severe threats to survival. We learn about them all the time. The threat of environmental destruction is much too real to put to the side. The threat of destruction by uh, weapons of mass destruction, that has come very close many times. Uh, we just learned that uh, at the time of the Cuban Missile Crisis, a probably terminal nuclear war was averted by one word from one submarine commander who countermanded an order to send off nuclear missiles. Major threats are predicted in large part as a consequence of government policies. Uh, Hart Rudman high-level task force can give you a list of them. It just came out. So the survival of the species is by no means a sure thing. Decent survival. Well, what's hegemony? A hegemony has to do with a domination of the international system by uh, small sectors of power at the moment that happens to be one superpower which uh, does not dominate the rest of the world in all dimensions but overwhelmingly dominates it in one dimension namely the military dimension the United States now probably outspends the next uh, maybe 25 countries in the world in military expenditures and is increasing that lead and furthermore uh, has made it extremely clear and unambiguous that it intends to make sure that it will dominate the world by force, the dimension in which it reigns supreme, and that it will tolerate no competitors. This has caused plenty of shudders in the world, uh, even in the U.S. foreign policy elite, and though it's not unique to this administration or even to the United States, it is taking a historical form which is unusual, maybe unprecedented. Well, then, uh, what are the consequences of hegemony? Hegemony for survival. Unfortunately, if you look at the factors that surround hegemony, the short-term goals to maximize profit, to increase control of the world, and so on, you ask how those uh, goals play out. Turns out they do happen to threaten survival. And it's a deep problem because uh, the decisions are not irrational within the framework of the institutions in which they're being taken, but they may be utterly irrational uh, as compared with the likelihood that my grandchildren will have a world to live in. So, for example, in the military dimension, carrying forth the announced goal of controlling the world by force and ensuring that there are no competitors is almost certainly leading to proliferation of weapons of mass destruction, uh, increasing of tension, increasing of the likelihood of terrorist operations, which could be quite serious, and those can, in unanticipated ways, lead to massive destruction. Just to turn to another dimension, the United States is alone in the world and this is not Bush, this goes back to the Clinton administration and before, is alone in the world in trying to move to the militarization of space. Those policies are intended, as is stated, to ensure U.S. commercial interests and investments. However, if you look at those plans, they pose an extreme threat to survival because of uh, the nature of the systems that are being considered. And Across the board, the choice between hegemony and survival is uh, one that we must face if we care about our grandchildren.